Welcome back to our press preview with Christina and Matthew as we take a look at the front pages as they come in. The eye is there with uh, a tornado on the front, airstrikes on Syria within weeks, Defence Secretary makes case for UK intervention, um, and of course more than about Adonis. Um, well, one wonders, will this take place without uh, a vote in the Commons? How will they actually organise this, given that the air is full of Russian jets mm. bombing, it seems, all sorts of targets at the We've moment? We've already got drones, apparently, targeting mm. ISIS. We don't know how effectively. Well, who knows? And who knows whether it's the right thing to do, but certainly... Um, it's a complicated situation because there's Russia saying that they're attacking ISIS and apparently what they're doing is shoring up Assad, doing everything possible to preserve that, to, to keep Assad in power, which, and he's doing a pretty good job of that anyway. Um, of course, Corbyn would be deeply opposed to this, but the suspicion is that lots of Labour MPs would now support this, who wouldn't last, well, some did last time, but obviously Miliband swung the vote last time. Yeah, although, I mean, I, I, I would think it's probably correct to say the SNP wouldn't vote in favour. I mean, it's still a pretty high-risk tactic for Cameron to take it to the Commons. It is, um, but I think that the, the real issue is would it actually work mm. if he got it through? And it seems to me that what makes us so intellectually impotent is the complexity on the ground across the whole of the Middle East. Any time we try something that sounds intuitively plausible, mm. get rid of a bad man, Saddam Hussein. Surgical leave... strikes, that's mm. another phrase, wasn't it? And, yeah, and, yeah, do, and does it work? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we thought that it was a really smart thing to back the insurgents against Assad, who's a horrible dictator. Mm. That left the vacuum, the space for ISIS. Mm. And I think that there are all sorts of myriad unintended consequences mm. that could do whether we do something or whether we do nothing. Absolutely. And I think what we have to understand fundamentally is that this is a long-term historical schism in Islam between the Sunni and the Shia. You've got Assad who's an Alawite. You've got Iran trying to ferment um, problems for the Sunni dictatorships. Mm. And to be honest, this is a religious war that we can do very little to shape through bombing. And it's I interesting that Obama agree. in the White House mm. indicated that maybe Putin has actually created quite a few difficulties for himself getting into that mire by launching the military operations, indicating perhaps the sensible thing was just stand back for well, a while. Well, I think, I think that everyone, yeah, I'm sure he has created a political mire, and, and Putin, as we all know, is not someone who likes to lose face, and, mm. and you don't really, you're not particularly likely to succeed in an environment like Syria. It's an unbelievably complicated issue. I don't think I agree with you that it's mm -hmm. all about the Sunni-Shia thing. Of course, that's always a component in Middle Eastern politics, mm. but... Uh, but I absolutely agree with you that whether you intervene or don't intervene, things seem to get worse and there is a law of unintended consequences. I heard James Rubin, um, former, uh, what was he, former Secretary of State. Secretary of State. Uh, uh, Secretary of State. In, in the Clinton uh, yes, administration. I heard him yes. speak um, at something on Sunday about the situation in Syria and he said that, you know, after... He didn't have a particular course of action in mind, but he did say that non-intervention after has you know things are only getting worse mm. all the time, mm. and um, Assad is an absolutely vicious dictator, and people are being tortured and murdered by him all the time, and we are now thinking that our only problem is ISIS, and of course we you can't just go in and easily intervene in a country but the ISIS is just one of many many problems you can't just attack part of it and not the rest of it I, d I don't know that military action will achieve anything very much and what happens when you then suddenly find yourself in confrontation with a Russian plane or exactly you know you it's accidentally hit a Russian yeah air and controller and on the ground? I think or? It's, a, it's the first time in a very, very long time that you can see the scope for a genuine confrontation between mm. genuine global powers. Yeah. I mean, America, obviously, the dominant mm. power, but something could go wrong. A serious milk miscalculation mm. or yeah. unintended consequence in aerial combat. It could happen. But Obama, Obama has been... He saw the price of Iraq and Afghanistan and he has been trying to avoid getting yeah. involved in a Middle East war at okay. all costs. Yeah. Yeah. Let's head back now to the front pages of the Telegraph. Uh, because... have a, you know. uh, it's more from the papers with Christina and Matthew as we now take a look at the front of the eye there with uh, a tornado, airstrikes on Syria within weeks. No question mark, though, on that headline. Mm. I wonder if they ought to be. Mm. Yeah. Well, they ought to be. 
I think yes, agree. Oh, I mean, OK. Next. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, the, the issue here is, for that to happen, <clears throat> yep. we presume there will have to be a Commons vote. Yep. Mm. Bearing in mind what happened last time to David Cameron, is he really going to risk that again? Well, he's going to be very nervous, but he's also going to be very reluctant, one would have thought, to go in and bomb any more than... Mm. Then, well, at the moment we're sending drones in to bomb ISIS, but if you're actually going to have an air campaign, you do need to. You would have thought you'd have to get the will of Parliament. So I would, yeah. It seems... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the difficulty, of course, is that, as we've seen with these aerial photographs, I mean, the Russians have got, you know, their jets already on the ground. They've been launching strikes with Michael Fallon saying they're not targeting ISIS, they're targeting other opponents of mm. the Assad regime. Mm. One wonders how, in terms of the military strikes, we would operate in the same airspace without coming, you know, face to face with a Russian jet in the air. And it's deeply worrying, because if there was, God forbid, an accident, between a British fighter and a Russian one, what on earth would happen then with Putin's ego on the line mm. and his willingness to front up and be muscular? Mm. I mean, I think the real issue here is what is the strategy? What is our overall objective? What are we hoping to achieve if we bomb ISIS and we can be precision guided in our targeting? What do we think will happen next? Don't we think, well, will think they nobody, be replaced? Will it nobody... incite more mm. um, potential extremists? Every time we've done mm. anything in the Middle East, in my living memory, the unintended consequences have overwhelmed any sense of the actual objective in Iraq, with Assad, and I fear that it could happen again. I think we have to recognise that this is a long-term problem, I think, driven by religious factionalism, Sunni, Shia, Alawite, Sufi, different strands within Sunni Islam, the Wahhabis, Al-Qaeda, throat with with isis mm. and i don't think we can do a great deal to shape it except hope that the forces of rationality and secularism put a stop to it i all. don't i disagree I, I don't think in syria it is about religion i don't think it's about the sunnis and but isn't the, the other issue that all those uh, minds of rationality and secularism have actually been trekking across Europe to get up and try and yeah. find a new life in Europe. That's the problem, that those that are left are absolutely. either those who haven't been able to get out yet or the ones that want to foment some kind of religious upheaval. That's absolutely right. And I, th well, I have to say, I back Cameron's idea of not trying to inspire more mm. people to come over by saying, yes, we will take you in, because we need people to go back and rebuild that country. Well, and it's not, but it's not, it's not in any state to be rebuilt at the moment. And actually, True. most of the people who are trying to get into Europe are young men, not just from Syria, but from Pakistan, from yeah. West Africa. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones who are more likely to want to seek a better life. Mm. And um, I, I think it's... I think, by having a system where it's just whoever turns up on the doorstep that gets that gets a greater likelihood of, of asylum, I think that's unfair. I think I like there's that. a lot to be said for for Cameron's view of actually yeah. being at the refugee camps. Agreed. Some kind of, of but, but uh, actually we're looking at grading in, in, system. Yes, you know, but in relation to Syria, in relation to Syria, we're actually looking at the entire population of Syria, and this is no answer. Yeah. Okay, page two of the Times.